Well, once again, welcome to Connect Groups. Uh, like always, I'm honored that you're faithful to your group, and I know from the emails I'm receiving and the comments on Facebook that Connect Groups are doing exactly what we designed them to do, connecting you to each other, connecting you to the church, and allowing you to grow in your discipleship. So thank you very much. And uh, this week, I want to dive in, and I'm just going to spend a very small amount of time recapping because I want to give you extra time to do something specific for your groups this time. So this past Sunday, I was talking about the important topic of faith and trust. And how I explain it on Sunday is that faith and trust go hand in hand. It first starts with our faith in God, and then that leads to the ability to trust others, such as the leaders in our lives and also the people that we're in relationship with. And it really does have to be in that order. We have to trust God first and put our faith in Him first in order for us to trust His leaders that He's placed in our lives and then also into the relationships because He's placed us into the body of Christ. And so if we trust Him and then we know that where He's placed us is according to His sovereignty and His perfect plan, then we can trust those around us. And, and there's more dynamics to that, but that's just a, a quick recap of this past week. But as I was thinking about this and, and where I want to go this week for the, the group discussion, is I was thinking about how important trust is. Um, I've said this before, but I, I want to say it again for the sake of this video, is that I really don't have that much of a fear uh, from an outside assault that's going to hurt our church. Like, I'm not too concerned that there's going to be pressures from culture. And I'm not saying individuals won't be tempted. I'm just saying I don't feel like there's going to be some group that's going to come against our church and destroy our church. I'm not, I'm not concerned about uh, the economy. I'm not concerned about uh, just some like natural disaster hurting our church. I mean, those things can uh, affect the church. But, but really, in my mind, I just don't have a fear of that. But as a pastor, one thing that I am uh, very concerned about and I think about often, not because we have an unhealthy environment, but because I know the potential of it, is I think if there's anything that's ever going to destroy our church, it's going to come from internal dissension. And that's going to come from people quit, uh, where they quit trusting each other, where there starts to be some division and they start to actually attack each other. Because I have seen more churches, unfortunately, than I care to admit, I've seen more churches destroyed from the inside out. And almost always, almost always, it starts with a lack of trust. Someone does something that it, it fails to meet the expectations of someone else, and there's that distrust, and then they fill that gap with, with um, gossip, they fill that gap with anger, and uh, it just eventually starts to erode the health of a church and destroys it from the inside out. And, and, and as I was thinking about that, this is what, something that as a pastor I want to always be intentional to fight against. And, and even for me personally, the reason that this, I think, is such a, a passionate topic for me is because it's something I have struggled with. And I would even say, to be honest, that I still struggle with in the sense that I have to be fully aware of my limitations. You see, two weeks ago, I talked about generosity. That was something I was passionate about because it was easy for me. I've always been a generous person. It's how I'm wired. It's the environment I grew up in. So I've always been passionate about it. This past Sunday, though, as I talked about trust, this is something I'm passionate about because I haven't done it well in my life, and God is teaching me so many incredible things about this. You see, I used to have the bent in my life that I was, I would say, initially in a relationship, I was distrustful. So I would not trust people until they proved that they were trustworthy. And then to go even further, if I was in a relationship and someone did something to violate my trust, Either that was a deal breaker and that relationship was over, or I just never trusted them again. And so it greatly hindered that relationship. And I, unfortunately, I, I'm ashamed to admit, I've had relationships go bad in my life because I've chosen not to forgive someone and not to trust them. And, and here's a truth that we all have to acknowledge. If there is not trust in a relationship, that relationship at best has frozen, but at worst, it's going to start to disintegrate into where it's not a relationship anymore because it is impossible. I mean, just hear me on this. It is impossible to have a healthy relationship with, when there's no trust. I mean, any relationship, whether it be just with some friends or it's a romantic relationship such as boyfriend, girlfriend, or husband, wife, or that, that boss to Coordinate relationship, if there's no trust in that relationship, it's going to eventually end. I mean, there's just no way to get close to someone because if you don't trust them, then you're not going to allow that emotional and even intellectual side of yourself to connect to them. And if there's not that bond, then eventually it's going to break apart. So for us, as we look at this, I mean, how does this play out for us in our church? Um, if, if we're talking about trusting God and trusting our leaders and trusting each other, we have to be very purposed to allow that to be something that we celebrate. So for me personally, I mean, I've dealt with this even in my own personal counseling, 
is this issue of trust that I've had to recognize that, that my perspective is oftentimes unhealthy, so it, it's not even reasonable, and I've had to come to terms with that. And that was difficult because I could say, well, here's my perspective and here's my perspective, and, and I had to come to terms with sometimes my perspective was not reality, and then sometimes my reality wasn't even enough to, to say that I couldn't trust a person, and I've, I've had to wrestle with this. And so what I've done is I've turned this into very much what it is. I've turned it into a spiritual issue, something that I've taken to God and said, God, I need you to help me in this because I don't naturally do this well. And as I've talked with my counselor about it, who's a wonderful, godly man, and I've talked to him about it, that's his encouragement is to talk to others and to talk to God about it. And as I've done this, what I've seen is that God has started to even change my perspective, but how he changed my perspective was to first change my heart. So when I think about it for us as a church, as we're looking at the people and the relationships around us, what must we do to, in, in, in order to keep trust and to keep health as a part of our relationships? Well, here's what we have to do. We have to recognize who is the author of distrust, or another way, who is the author of mistrust? That author is Satan. I mean, Satan is attacking our church. And if you're not raised in a Christian environment and in the language of talking about Satan or spiritual battles or spiritual fights, if that seems odd to you, I just want you to, I want to say to you, trust me. Uh, I know that's kind of ironic to say in this message, but trust me, this is a very much a biblical idea. You see, God is a spirit. Um, I mean, Jesus said this, God is a spirit and those who want to worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. God is spirit. And if we believe that God is real and we believe that he has spoken to us through his Bible, Jesus talked about it, Paul talked about it. There is spiritual warfare. There are demonic powers that come against us. And one of the ways that they attack us is to attack us at the core of our relationships, which means they attack our level of trust. So what's our response to this? Now, we can say, when we can look back in our lives and we can look at failures and think, well, people have failed me in the past, therefore I'm, just, I'm not going to trust leaders. But I just want to, I want to challenge you on this. Do you think this is God's design for your life, to live a life full of distrust? It's not. So how do you overcome that? Well, there's many things you can do, but the most important thing you can do is ask for God's spiritual help. If this is a spiritual attack against us, there's only one way to respond to that, and that is a spiritual defense and even a spiritual attack going forward. So here's what I want you to do in your groups, okay? So this is a, a simple idea, but I wanted to give you some extra time to do this. I want you to pray for all the relationships in your life. So here's what I want you to do, and then I'm going to tell you what I don't want you to do. What I want you to do is I want you to first go around the group and ask, does anyone need prayer so that they can trust in God more? Okay. Now here's what you can do in your groups. You can get specific if you want to, or you can keep it vague if you want to. So what I mean by that is you can go around the group and someone might say, yeah, I need help, but I'm just going to leave it at that. There's something God's called me to. I just need help trusting God. I'm just going to leave it at that honor that, but then I want you to pray for those, those people. Maybe you get them in the middle. That's what we do in our group sometimes. Get them in the middle, lay hands on them, pray for them. Maybe you can take turns who's leading that prayer, however you want to do it, however you're comfortable. Um, someone also, though, might be specific and say, God has specifically called me to this. I'm having a, a tough time trusting him, and then pray about it, okay? Then I want you to go around the circle and say, are there anyone that have relational tension in their life? Now, here's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking that you keep this vague for the sake of not adding to dissension, okay? Uh, I just feel this in my spirit, so I'm asking you to honor me in this. Don't give names. If you have some relationship in your life where someone has broken trust, for this group, I'm asking you just to say generally, I need prayer. Will you pray for me? And then I want you once again to go around and to pray for those people. And, and that one will cover both uh, the relationship of, to uh, uh, trusting a leader or trusting those around you, okay? So those are the two major things, trust in God and trust in others, which includes leaders or those around you. And I want you to spend some time praying. And then lastly, here's what I want you to do. I want you to specifically pray for our leaders. So you could do that as a group. I don't know how much time you're going to have based on how people raise their hands, but if you have time, go through and lift up our leaders by name. Um, if you can think of that, let me give you the specific. I want you to pray for our pastors and our directors and our elders, okay? So uh, I'll do this quickly and hopefully you know who they are. The pastors of our church, obviously I'm a lead pastor, uh, but then we also have Pastor Joe Barber, who's our executive pastor, Pastor Chris Reed, who is our director of media and technology, uh, Pastor Phil Venrick, who's over our children's. Then we have some directors. We have Mary Johnson, my wife, who leads, leads the, the women's ministry. We have Brandon Lightnecker and Zach Somm, who lead our men's ministry. We have uh, Carrie Crawford, who leads as director of our worship. Uh, so pray for them. Then also we have our elders. Joe and I are elders, but then there's also Tom Milby and Jim Wellington. 
So just take some time, and maybe it's just a group prayer that you pray for all of them. Maybe you can go through them individually by name. But just pray for them. Pray that your hearts will be submissive to the leadership of our church because this is what God has called us to do. Guys, I'm excited. This is a very important week uh, that we allow trust to build in our lives. And, and I'll tell you, from a guy who has done this, I have learned to trust, and it has become more natural, and I'm thankful for it. My relationships are healthier. My heart is healthier, and that's why I share this with such passion as I know this is a godly attribute that he wants us to have, that we will have faith in God so that we can trust our leaders and trust each other. I'm praying for you, as you know. I love you very much, and I'll see you on Sunday.